Ah, uh, my hair. Hey sisters, today I'm gonna to talk to you about why we sometimes struggle with hair loss when it comes to PCOS and what we can actually do about it. Stay tuned until the end when I'll share my favorite tea I like to make to improve hair growth. Hair loss can be one of the most devastating symptoms of PCOS, and it seems to take the longest to reverse, somewhere between six and 12 months. With that being said, you can absolutely do it. Growing your hair back just requires long-term consistent treatment. You have to keep doing the thing that's helping to improve your hair. There are different ways to treat it, from medical treatments to cosmetic treatments to lifestyle changes. Medical treatments include medications that drive down androgens, like spironolactone, for example. You may have heard of it. Cosmetic treatments are things like getting haircuts to improve your hair volume or using wigs or weaves. Lifestyle treatments involve taking daily action towards reducing inflammation and reducing insulin levels and thus reducing the androgens. Now, you can do whichever combination of treatment styles that you feel align with you. In the meantime, stay focused on the lifestyle changes that are gonna target the root cause of the hair loss, so that after six to 12 months of consistency, you can see your hair growing back. When it comes to female pattern balding, there can be several causes. We could have high androgens, which are hormones that are typically higher in males. This can cause our hair to fall out. We can also have normal androgen levels and still struggle with hair loss because it really depends on our sensitivity level to androgens. Some people's hair follicles are more sensitive to androgens and they're more susceptible to hair fall. Now there can also be other underlying reasons like hypothyroidism or nutrient deficiencies, like low levels of iron or not eating enough calories, especially for those of us sisters who were told to eat less and move more. Excessive exercise can be stressful on our body, especially if we're not replenishing with enough food. Your body isn't gonna prioritize hair growth when it's focused on something more essential, like survival. Think about if any of these apply to you. You really gotta do some personal investigation, maybe even get blood work done, and evaluate your lifestyle to see what's going on and what you can change. In this video, I'm going to discuss lifestyle treatments for hair loss in PCOS women like us. The first thing we wanna do is improve our level of inflammation and our insulin sensitivity. This is because they trigger high androgen levels. And what happens then is androgens like testosterone convert to their more potent form, DHT, gathering around our hair follicle, causing it to shrink and the hair to fall out. DHT also can lead to our sebaceous gland next to the hair follicle to overproduce oil, leading to cystic acne, but I'll talk more about that in another video. So what do we need to do? We need to do the things that reduce insulin levels, reduce inflammation, and block DHT. I'll start with insulin. Dairy is a major trigger when it comes to insulin levels because it contains IGF-1, insulin-like growth factor one. Eating dairy spikes your insulin levels as much as carbs, like bread would. So cutting out dairy could be very helpful. With that being said, there are many ways to treat high insulin levels, like reducing your sugar intake or doing workouts that don't pump stress hormones, like slow weighted workouts. We show you how to do them in the Sisterhood, our monthly membership program that I've linked in the description. You can also take supplements to help reduce insulin levels. My favorite one being Ovacetol, which I've also linked below. Like I said earlier, these are lifestyle changes and you have to go into it with the intention of making it sustainable for yourself because it's going to take a bit of time to grow your hair back. But have faith, it will grow back. You also want to reduce inflammation. Gluten and dairy can be a major trigger for inflammation, so cutting them out for at least 30 days to see if any of your PCOS symptoms improve is a sign that this might be the right first step for you. Other ways to reduce inflammation are, of course, eating a variety of vegetables. 
in all the different colors. This is going to give you a bunch of antioxidants that will help your liver process hormones. I also love adding spices when I'm cooking like turmeric and cinnamon. It did take a bit of effort for me to get used to regularly using these spices, but eventually it's a no-brainer and makes a big difference in reducing chronic inflammation and improving hair growth. Now that we've talked about some of the root causes of high androgens and the long-term lifestyle changes we can make to prevent the vicious cycle of hair loss, let's talk about my favorite drink to help reduce testosterone levels, spearmint tea. Studies show that two to three cups of spearmint tea a day for 30 days can significantly help reduce androgen levels, specifically testosterone in patients with PCOS. That's a study done on us. Gosh, those are hard to find. Now that we have that knowledge, let's pour ourselves a cup of tea. What I like to do is grab a cute pitcher that fits in my fridge because I like to drink iced tea. Then I fill it up with water and add two days worth of spearmint tea in there because I like to prepare two days at a time. My favorite spearmint tea is peak tea. I'll add six packets to my water, so that'll be three for today and three for tomorrow, and I'll let it dissolve. Peak tea is my favorite because it doesn't require a plastic tea bag. Studies show that those tea bags leak billions of microplastics into your tea, and that's the last thing a woman with PCOS needs, let me tell you. Peak tea has been triple toxin screened for pesticides, heavy metals, and toxic mold, so it's very pure, and I can easily pour it in hot or cold water, so there's no brewing necessary. It's quick and easy. I've linked it below in the description if you want to give it a try. After I've dissolved it, I like to zhuzh it up. Wait, what is zhuzh? It's like when you make it nice and pretty and like, zhuzh it up, don't like, you know? Like spice it up? Spice it up. Why can't we use the same term that we've been using? Spice it up! <laughs> All right. I'll add mint leaves, lemon slices, and strawberries. This makes it just more appealing and fun to drink. And I'm less likely to forget about pouring myself a glass because every time I open my fridge, I see this delicious drink waiting for me. It lasts two days, so you'll drink half the pitcher on one day and the other half on the other day. You can also make a fresh batch every day if you prefer that. Cheers, sisters. These are some lifestyle tips that can make a huge impact on your hair growth journey. I hope you're inspired to make some changes. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and take the quiz in the description to see what type of PCOS you might have. I really appreciate every like, comment, and share.